How about y'all? This is Daniel Nicholson with Nicholson Farms. Welcome back to another video. Uh, the day has came. It is time to wean the babies off of the mamas, or at least the 12 babies that we had back in November. Um, we're going to catch all the goats up. We're going to check their Fomacha score, you know, looking at their eyelids. Um, we're going to trim any feet that needs to be trimmed, and we're going we're gonna to separate off those babies and some nannies that we're expecting to have babies any day now. Um, so we'll get all of them in one pen. So we're still feeding them accordingly. Um, we'll explain all that here in the video. So y'all stick with us and I hope you enjoy it. Howdy y'all, this is Daniel Nicholson with Nicholson Farms and welcome back to another video. Uh, this video is all going to be all about uh, separating and weaning babies off of mamas and also some uh, deworming uh, tips and advice and also some hoof trimming advice. So y'all stick with us and I hope you enjoy the video. So it's kind of windy here in South Carolina today so I'm kind of hunkered down behind the horse trailer but I just kind of wanted to talk to you for a second. Uh, about uh, you know weaning the goats and everything and I had originally planned on showing you know worming and foot trimming and all that good stuff um, but I, as you can see here in a second I'm gonna roll some clips of, of us um, catching and working some goats and at the end I actually cut my finger and I was trying to wait to to save at least one or two goats to show you you know what I look for when I need to worm a goat and also hoof trimming um, but I'm gonna roll those clips real quick and it's just gonna be us working through a bunch of goats and then I kind of explain how I cut my finger so there's your hoof trimming advice for the day so y'all check that out real quick and I'll catch right back up with you All right, so we got everybody wormed. I was gonna stop the video and show you, you know, what I check for in eyes, and you know what I want to do uh, as far as trimming feet. But I cut my finger pretty bad with my trimmers, and so I'm gonna. We went ahead and got everybody finished, and I've got everybody separated. I'm gonna catch back up with y'all tomorrow, and I'll explain my groups that I, I separated everybody with. Um, don't be cheap like me. And just go out and buy you a pair of hedge trimmers to um, trim your goat's feet. They got a serrated edge on one side and pretty much a knife on one side. And that serrated edge decided to cut into my knuckle. And it cut it pretty deep. So we're going to go get that cleaned up. But um, I guess the moral of the story today is don't be cheap. and Go buy you some um, good hoof trimming uh, shears. But we're going to catch back up with you tomorrow. And I'll show you all the groups that I separated everybody in and why we did that. I'm going to go get everybody some water and some food for the night, and um, we'll catch back up with y'all tomorrow. So since I didn't get to explain it um, with using a goat, uh, basically when I worm animals, I look at their eyes, uh, their mucous membrane inside their eyelid, and um, they call it the FAMACHA score. I actually do not have my FAMACHA card yet, but I've taken all the, the classes and everything online to be able to do that. I just have to send in a video of me actually checking um, that mucous membrane on a goat. So we'll be doing that shortly and whenever I get that card I'll actually make a video of doing the FAMACHA score. But um, basically you're looking at the how pale the mucous membrane is. The paler it is, the heavier worm load they have because of the tapeworm, not tapeworm, sorry, the barber pole worm um, actually attaches to the intestinal wall and sucks the blood out of the animal. And so 
uh, they become kind of anemic and that's where that um, pale mucous membrane um, comes from. But basically, whenever I work my goats, um, or at least yesterday, for weaning, I weaned all my babies because weaning is one of the most stressful times of a young goat's life. So I went ahead and um, I went ahead and dewormed all of them just because they're about to be stressed out pretty hard being separated from their mothers. As um, far as my older goats, uh, I only worm them if they need to be wormed. I kind of I don't want to build up resistance in the worm load, and so that's why I'm only worming them when they are needed to. Uh, we went through and pretty much trimmed all the hooves yesterday just because it's been real wet and um, that's no fault to the goat some are worse than others that is a fault to the goat but for the most part there wasn't too bad it's just you know wet weather um, mud doesn't grind their um, their hoofs down as much as a hard surface will uh, so we went through we wormed everybody and we we trimmed all hooves that needed to be trimmed and then we we sorted as we went um, kind of the way i sorted them and i'll show you my groups here in a second is I put all my young nannies that I'm weaning off their mothers into one pen. And in that pen, I also put my three mamas that have babies on them now, and also the six nannies that uh, are expected to have babies here in the next couple weeks. And I did that so I can keep feeding those nannies that are, are real close to their due date, and also keep feeding those nannies that are, that are actually feeding their babies um, through milk. And I also wanna keep feeding my young nannies and I'm gonna set up the creep feeder here in a little while. I'll bring y'all with me and we'll do that. I'm gonna leave the creep feeder in there with those young nannies so they can they can consume as much as they want throughout the day. And also I'll still be supplementing them in the feed trough. Uh, so that's my first grouping. And my second grouping uh, is my, my nannies that raise those young nannies or young girls. And they're in one pasture uh, with some yearling does that, that are not bred and I did that because I'm going to pretty much stop feeding them for the summer. Uh, grass is starting to grow. And it's 80 degrees here in South Carolina today. And they still have hay. Um, I'm probably just going to give them a little bit of grain for the next couple of days. Just to kind of wean them off that, that grain. And they're doing well. I think I have. I can't remember. I think it's 8 or 9, maybe 10 uh, in that group. And they're in a bigger pasture. So they have more more access to grass than the other ones. And my last group, my third group, is my young bucklings. I've got four in that pen, and I don't have a cell feeder set up today. It's actually at my house. Um, I'm gonna set it up tomorrow. I'm just gonna feed them in the feed trough today, but they're gonna be on full feed as well. And so they'll have all the access to feed they want so they can continue to grow out. Um, I was real happy with my, my kid crop from um, November this year. All my dolings probably average about 30 to 40 pounds. Um, I think that's a pretty good weight uh, for the program that I have. And my young bucklings are about the same with the exception of one. And he's probably close to 50 pounds. He's, he's a big boy. And so we're gonna, we're gonna keep rolling them all out. We're gonna, we're gonna leave them in those pens uh, for the next couple weeks. Um, We'll talk a little more about that in a second, but I'll leave my, my billies up here um, close to their moms for about another two weeks, and then I'll take them down behind the house into the pasture with our feeder calf brisket and our big billy uh, Clifford. So I guess we can kind of show you the groups. Um, everybody's still hanging out close to the fence, close to their young ones. But in this pasture over here is where I have my nannies that still have babies on them, and also, um, my weanling does and my expecting mothers, they're in this pasture all together. Uh, we'll be putting that um, creep feeder out there for them young nannies. And, and I've, got, I've got a couple of them over here and several of them up here. And that's my, my does and my, my um, yearling does that you know that will be off of feed. And then in this little pasture back over here is where I've got my little bucklings. Uh, the reason I did this, you know, this pasture right here, it's almost the same. It's the same size as this, except for I have a cross fence in the in the center of it. Let me get back out of the wind. Uh, so the reason I have that, I mean, one of the reasons I put that cross fences in is to um, rotate animals, but also whenever I wean, I want to be able to do fence line weaning where 
Um, the mothers are on one side and the babies are on the other. So they can still touch noses through the fence and all that good stuff. Um, they're not completely separated. It kind of slows down the process so they're not stressed out as much. Um, during weaning is one of the most stressful times for a baby. Uh, like I said earlier, that's why I went ahead and dewormed them all. And last year when I weaned, I, I, I separated uh, my kids all together away from the mothers where they could not see them. And with that, I ran into some trouble with coccidia. Had a couple of them kind of get too stressed out and um, coccidia kind of took over. All goats have coccidia. Um, most times they can manage their levels, but whenever you get them real stressed out, their um, immune system can't fight that coccidia. Uh, so that's what, one reason we're doing the fence line weaning this year. We're gonna see how that works for us. And in the next couple weeks, we'll be um, moving the little bucklings up farther away. And the, and the little dolings, as soon as their mothers uh, dry up, I'll be putting them back in with the mothers just so I don't have three herds in my pasture so I can get my, my summer rotation running uh, for my grass management and parasite management program. And so with that, we're going to go ahead and move some troughs around. Um, I'm going to get everybody fed up, kind of show you everybody. Um, there's a lot of hollering going on because everybody wants to be with their mom and the moms want to be with the babies. Um, all these moms' udders are, are pretty full right now. And I imagine it's a little painful for them, but they'll be drying up here in the next couple of days and it'll be a whole lot easier for them. So I'm gonna go grab the four wheeler and the trailer. We're gonna load up some troughs. We're gonna load up that creek feeder and I'm gonna take you around all the groups and get everybody fed up for the afternoon. So I'm hoping you're enjoying the video. I hope this is kind of informative for you. Uh, I'm sorry about yesterday not being able to, to show you how I check for matcha score and trim feet but we'll be sure to do that in a future video. And also I have a video that I'll put at the end of this, this video to explain that. So let me go grab the four wheeler and let's get everybody fed up for the afternoon. So it kind of just occurred to me that I didn't explain um, why I even wean. Uh, the reason I wean is because uh, during the lactation, lactation process, the mother's putting all that nutrients into the milk and their body condition, condition kind of goes down and i want after three months of age that baby's old enough to be weaned so i go ahead and do it for the mother so she can start getting her body condition back up especially this time of year with spring coming um, the warmer weather means um, more parasites for that animal and so we're gonna get their body condition going up going into that that um, real critical time for its parasites and also it allows me to um, put more weight onto the babies, making sure they're getting all the, the grain they can eat and the moms are not taking any of that. And with my little billies, I don't band yet. I plan on starting to band in the future, but I wanna get them little billies out of the way because at about four to five months old, those little billies will, are able to breed. They're old enough and I don't want them breeding back to their moms or any yearling does that I have. So that's just another reason. So I just thought about that when I was walking across the um, pasture that I, di I didn't really explain why wean. So I hope that answers your questions if that was a question. All right, so this is the, the wingling doe group and the mothers that are expecting. And I'm not gonna lie to you, a couple of the moms that we had separated, I think they just found a way through. So I'm gonna go figure out where that was and we'll get them separated probably tomorrow. It ain't gonna hurt them too bad today. So here comes some more. So they, there's obviously a hole up there in, in the fence. I'm thinking my brother or I'll, maybe I won't blame it on my brother. Maybe I, I forgot to shut it. So that's them. But I really appreciate y'all hanging out with us today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell. And um, we'll be seeing y'all on future videos. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see y'all on the next one.
There's the problem. 